Guys, everything has its time in life, as the old saying goes. Throughout the Earth's history, species have come and species have gone. For the first time though, humans have reached a point now where they may be able to bring back some species from the grave. Some people argue this is a very bad idea. Others can't wait to see it happen. Either way, it seems like it's going to become a reality in the not too distant future. My name is Danny Burke, and this is the top 10 extinct animals being brought back to life. Let's start off at number 10 now with the dodo. The dodo is one of the most famous extinct animals of all time, responsible for coining the phrase as dead as a dodo. The last of these birds was thought to have died out in 1662. They were only found on the island of Mauritius in the Indian Ocean. They lived in harmony with the ecosystem there and had no natural predators until humans arrived and killed them off for food. Scientists discussed the possibility of bringing back the dodo from extinction during a TEDx discussion in Washington DC in 2013. The dodo's closest living relative is the Nicobar pigeon, and some say that one of its eggs could be fused with the cell of a dodo to create a living dodo. Imagine if that happened. It would ruin that phrase. Next up at number nine now, we have the mammoth. Now this is perhaps the most famous extinct animal of all time. Society has been obsessed with these woolly elephant cousins for decades. Interesting fact for you guys, although most of them did die out about 10,000 years ago, a small population of mammoths survived on Wrangell Island off the coast of Russia until just 3,600 years ago. That's nothing if you think about it. Humans were running around at the end of the Bronze Age during then. Anyway, because of how recently they died out and how many of their bodies became frozen in the permafrost, scientists have actually been able to extract cells from mammoth remains. The plan is then to splice specific mammoth genes into the genome of an elephant embryo to create a sort of mammoth elephant hybrid with all the mammoth traits we recognize. Now this isn't just for no reason either. Some scientists say that these new mammoths could help prevent tundra permafrost from melting and releasing huge amounts of greenhouse gas into the atmosphere. Moving on to number eight now, we have the thylacine. This species died out in the 1930s after being hunted to extinction in its native Australia. It may look like a dog, but the thylacine actually belonged to the marsupial family and was a relative of kangaroos and koalas. A group of Australian scientists led by Michael Archer have previously worked on bringing back the thylacine from extinction. They called themselves the Lazarus Project. Their efforts only managed to capture some of the fragments of the thylacine DNA though, and not enough for a true clone. Still, even this was enough for people to see the thylacine as a strong candidate for eventual de-extinction. Next up at number seven now, we have the gastric brooding frog. This little frog was native to the eastern coast of Australia and went extinct less than a hundred years ago. It got its name from its interesting method of reproduction. The females would swallow their fertilized eggs, which would then hatch into tadpoles in the frog's stomach before being vomited out into the water. It sounds gross, but it definitely worked. Because of how recently they went extinct, scientists recovered enough genetic material to create create living embryos. They haven't been used to create an actual gastric brooding frog yet, but some argue that even this means they are already back from extinction. Moving on to number six now, we have the Bucardo. The Bucardo was a wild goat native to the Pyrenees. The last one, a female named Celia, died in January 2000. Scientists preserved her cells and attempted to bring the species back from the dead. They injected the nuclei from Celia's cells into goat eggs that had been emptied of their DNA. They then implanted 50 seven of them into different goat surrogate mothers of closely related species. Only seven of them became pregnant and six of those had miscarriages. One of the goats successfully gave birth to a clone though. Fernandez Arias held the newborn calf in his arms. He said it was struggling to breathe and all of their attempts to help failed. The calf died just 10 minutes later. It was found to have a faulty lung caused by a genetic defect. At the time, it was the closest the world has ever come to de-extinction and still remains a possible candidate. Moving on to number five now, we have the quagga. The quagga is an extinct subspecies of the plain zebra and lived in South Africa. The last wild quagga was hunted to extinction in 1878. The last captive one died in Amsterdam five years later. And because of their close relationship to the plain zebra, some scientists have created the quagga project, which is attempting to use selective breeding to create a new subspecies that strongly resembles the quagga. In 2016, the project announced they had six individuals 
individuals showing the preferred pattern. The goal is to have 50 of them and then move them to a protected area for continued breeding. Will this count as the quagga being brought back from extinction? Let me know what you think. All right, moving on to number four now, we have Stella's sea cow. This sea mammal was discovered by Europeans in 1741 on Bering Island in the Northern Pacific Ocean. It went extinct just 27 years later after being hunted for its meat, fat, and hide. It belonged to a group of species known as Dugongidae. The only surviving species of that group is now the dugong. Some scientists hope that if enough sea cow DNA can be recovered, they can fuse it with the egg of a dugong and bring back the sea cow from extinction. One major problem though is size. Modern dugongs are just a fraction of the size of the extinct sea cow, so the pregnancy would be extremely difficult. Let's just say that. It's a problem that's still being worked on though. Next up at number three now, we have the passenger pigeon. Okay, this one might not be as cool as some of the other animals on our list, but give it a chance. In the 1860s, there were billions of these pigeons across North America. One account said that a flock once passed over southern Ontario that was a mile wide, 300 miles long, and took 14 hours to pass overhead. Less than 50 years later, they were extinct, mainly due to mass hunting. Enough specimens have been preserved so that scientists could reconstruct the birds in entire genome. The plan would then be to fuse this with the egg of the passenger pigeon's closest living relative, the band-tailed pigeon. However, there is no guarantee that the band-tailed pigeon will then tend to the egg or even look after any successful hatchlings. Next up at number two now, we have the auroch. About 10,000 years ago, the prehistoric settlers of India and Eurasia domesticated the auroch, an animal that looks a lot like a cow. That's because all modern day cattle are the descendants of the auroch. The auroch itself when extinct in the wild, but scientists are hoping to bring it back through back breeding cattle. This is where they breed cattle together that resemble the auroch. They then take the calves that most resemble the auroch and breed them, etc., etc., until eventually you get something that looks a lot like an auroch. One example of this that's already happened is heck cattle. Here's some pictures of them now. However, some people have debated whether these even really look like auroch. They're also a lot smaller too. Maybe they will get there one day though. And finally, number one now, we have the Carolina parakeet. This bird was hunted to extinction 100 years ago. It was native to the eastern US, which surprised me because its plumage would suggest it was much more tropical. Its feathers were also the reason it went extinct. Many of them were hunted so that the feathers could be used in women's hats, which were fashionable at the time. Some remain as pets or in captivity, but eventually they all died out. Now, as with many others on our list, their extinction being quite recent is a reason why they could make a good candidate for de-extinction. Some people worry though that if it was brought back, history would just repeat itself all over again as their feathers would instantly become valuable. Well, that's all the facts and science talk out of the way. Now it's time for your opinion. What do you guys think of de-extinction? Is it good to try and right the wrongs that humans made in the past or are we kind of toying with nature in a very unnatural way? Let me know your thoughts. My name is Danny Burke. Thank you as always for watching guys and I will see you all in the next video.